Welcome to another iDoctor UK video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this iPhone 13 Pro and we're going to replace the battery on it and make sure that the battery health reads at 100%. To do this, we're going to be using one of these XCAP BMS, which is a cell only battery, as well as the XCAP Tag on Flex. This is the bit what makes it go back to 100%. This battery is reading at 92% battery health, but it's come from one of our business customers who says he wants it to be 100%, to which we, of course, are going to oblige. So to start off, let's put it on the heat map for the next five to 10 minutes at 70 degrees. While that's heating up, I'm gonna open up this battery and show you how it works. Inside the packet, you get all these little stickers what help to protect the welded area after you've done it. And you'll also notice that it's got no BMS on there either. That's so that we can weld the original Apple BMS from the original phone onto this new one. It used to be the case that you would use a JCV1S or similar programming tool so that you could reprogram the battery to 100%, but using these XCAP tag on flexors, this does that for you. And you don't have to do any messing about reprogramming. You just plug it in once, turn on the phone, unplug it, then plug it in again, and then it works, reprograms it back to 100%. Once you've done that, you can actually take that flex off and reuse it again. Another thing to note about these XCAP batteries are they are pre-cut to roughly the right size, so you don't need to do much cutting down of them. They're really good. I am gonna peel off the double-sided tape from it first and then re-stick it on later because it, it sometimes does get in the way a little bit. And I almost forgot but you obviously need to remove the two pentalobe screws from the bottom of the device. So I'm gonna do that real quick whilst this is heating up still. And then once the phone is hot to the touch, we can take it off the heat plate and drop it into our Refox RS50 opening jig to open it up without damaging the screen. I think that this one's been opened before, so it should come away pretty easily, boom. So that's opened up the screen. We can just loosen it off now, take it out of the jig. And then this phone opens up just like a book. Now that we've got it opened up, we can remove the three tri-wing screws and the shield, disconnect the battery, then disconnect the screen. Then moving up to the top of the phone, we need to disconnect the proximity sensor, which is held down by this shield here, and two crosshead screws and two tri-wing screws. And now we can get this screen out of the way. The battery is held down by a couple of pull tabs down at the bottom of the battery. And the easiest way to get those out is to squirt some isopropyl alcohol underneath the battery and let that soak in for the next five or so minutes. It can also help if you put it onto the heat mat as well, whilst the alcohol is soaking in. If we were to just install a aftermarket battery and connect it up, then it would read as a non-genuine part. And most people don't want that because they like the gimmicky sort of feature of seeing how much battery health is in their phone. But here at iDoctor, we like to go the extra mile by swapping over the BMS so that you get that 100% battery health. A few moments later. So once it's had a few minutes on the heat mat, soaking up that alcohol, we're just gonna get some tweezers and we're gonna try and pull away the, the pull tabs so that we can pull them out in one piece. Before I even start doing this, I'm gonna guess that I'm gonna break these. And if you break them, then it's time for the pride of shame. I've pretty much give up on trying to get those bottom tabs out where the, where the charge port and vibration motor is. But what I find is usually easier to get out of these is the top tab up here, and then you can lift it up quite gently and fairly safely. So I failed miserably at getting that out without without causing any damage. The best and easiest way to do it is to get a plastic tool like that, get it underneath the battery and just carefully lift. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on there because there is the wireless charging coil under there. But they seem to be increasingly impossible to get the batteries out with the pull tabs. Like on the iPhone 6S, iPhone 7, even iPhone 8, they were fairly easy to get those pull tabs out. but on newer models, it's just becoming slightly ridiculous. Once the battery's actually out, I'm just gonna take a minute to get rid of that old adhesive out of there. I hope I get ripped in the comments for having to do the prior shame, 
but I don't care. I left myself wide open to it. Now we're gonna get our original battery and what we need to do is remove this BMS, which is hidden underneath some tape. So take some alcohol, add a little squirt under both sides so that it makes the tape a little bit easier to pull away. And then now you can see the battery terminals here and here. You don't want to touch anything metal so that these touch together because it will short out the battery and could cause a fire or even an explosion. So just be careful of that. I don't have a jig for a 13 Pro, so I just use the back side of it like that. The easiest way that I've found to remove these batteries from the BMS is to get one of these number 17 exacto blades and then very very carefully sort of cut the spot welds you can grind it off which works quite effectively but i definitely find that this is the easiest way it doesn't matter if we damage these terminals now what we don't want to damage is where it connects to the actual battery so that's one terminal removed now and then we're just going to spin it around and do the same thing to the other side that's removed just like that so this is the important part. The battery can be discarded safely now um, following your local recycling guidelines. And now we're gonna keep this on here and then take a small file. And we're just gonna smooth those guys out a little bit so that any of the remaining spot welds can be removed. I'm fairly happy with that now. So we can take our new battery and we're gonna just place it where it belongs you need to leave a small gap between the bms and the actual battery so that it can be folded over itself as well which i'll show you once we've got it welded we can now turn our welding tool on and make sure that it's set to automatic mode and then to actually weld it you just need to touch the two probes from the welder onto the battery and then it will automatically create a short circuit sometimes there's a little spark and then that's going to attack the battery onto the BMS. Same on the other terminal. You're just gonna make sure that there's a good few solid welds on there because what you don't want is for that battery to disconnect at all over time because as, as the phone gets used day to day and gets chucked around a bit, you might find that these can come loose. So make sure that there's plenty of welds on there. That's secured down now. Like I always say, give it a good pull to make sure that it's not gonna come off over time but those welds are solid on that one. Flipping the battery over now, we're gonna to start to seal the battery up by first of all, sticking that back down, which is double-sided tape. We can peel that back and we can fold the battery in on itself. We're gonna take this long strip of tape and cover up those exposed battery terminals just there and fold that over. Then we can slip on this plastic little sleeve like that. And then finally, over the top of it all, we're gonna place this last bit of tape. Make sure there's some kind of square so it doesn't look like a total amateur's done it. Fold that over like that, and then fold over each of the sides. And then that looks pretty close to how a battery should look. So, in terms of programming this battery, we're gonna take this tag on flex for the 13 Pro and the way that you're meant to do it is to you can fix it in permanently but there's really no need to do that instead just fold the battery connector back on itself a little bit attach the tag on flex like that and then we're going to install it into our phone first of all connect the screen and the proximity for sensor and then we can just I always call this dry fitting. We can just dry fit the battery onto the connector without securing it down first. Once the battery's connected, you're gonna take a lightning cable and boot the phone using that. What we should get this time is the non-genuine battery warning. And that's because the tag on flex is programmed to do that. So you can see here, important battery message, unable to determine if your iPhone battery is a genuine Apple part. Don't worry if you see this, I know that you're expecting it to be 100% straight away, but disconnect from the power. Open up the phone again, and then disconnect the tag on flex to turn the phone off. Now, simply reconnect the tag on flex, close up the phone, 
and the same again, boot the phone on the lightning cable. This time, however, when it turns on, it will have reprogrammed itself and it should say 100%. Did you see how the battery message popped up and then disappeared? That's because it forgot it from last time. And then when we go to battery health, it says 100%. One final step, because I like to reuse these battery flexes, disconnect it from the power again, disconnect the battery from the logic board. We can take out this battery now, disconnect the tag on flex, and then this battery can be just installed as normal. This time, it's gonna be the last time that I take this battery out. So we're going to stick it down with the battery adhesive that comes inside the packet. I always find applying some pressure to these means that they stick much better. And then we can peel off the back peel, fold over the tabs there and there, give somebody a chance if they ever have to remove this battery again of getting it out. And the best way to ensure perfect alignment of these so that you're not battling to reconnect the battery is to connect the battery first before you push down the battery. Now we can turn the phone on for one last time before we reseal it all back up and you'll see that it still says 100% battery health without using any programmers, anything like that. It's nice and easy. So to finish this one off, all we need to do is seal it back up, screw down the screws, put in the shields and that's another job done. As always, Thank you so much for watching. We recently hit over 5,000 subscribers and I love every single one of you. I will see you next time.